This is Tom. Tom had a fantastic business idea and was motivated to make it a reality. He saw two futures unfolding before him. In one, he spent months developing an intricate business strategy, soliciting investors, and investing all of his savings in the venture. In the other, he devised a quick strategy, tested it with possible clients, and reduced his costs to a minimal. Tom's first business venture was a failure. Nobody wanted to buy his goods, so he lost eight months of his life, all of his money, and all of his investors' money. In the second scenario, Tom's product did not sell either, but because he kept his expenses low and did not rely on investor funds, he did not lose much money. He only lasted a few weeks before realizing that this plan was a failure. In the book, The Lean Startup, author Eric Rice teaches us the tactics we need to start a business in the most effective way to ensure the firm works before risking our lives on it, all in six major lessons. Welcome to Cashflow Canvas, where we teach lessons about investment and money-saving techniques. If you want to make your financial future better, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for the latest updates. Lesson number one, do not imitate large organizations. The circumstances of a corporation differ greatly from those of a new firm. Many huge firms spend a lot of money creating their brand or acquiring a large consumer base, even if they don't generate a profit immediately. As a tiny business, you're just looking to make your first million. You do not have shareholders to impress or celebrities to sponsor. As a small business owner, your sole responsibility is to generate revenue. While large corporations can spend money on advertising at a loss, you must develop a lucrative and sustainable approach to find customers. To begin building the business, we must be assured that a consumer wants to buy the product, and one of the most effective ways to do so is to test your theory in a real-world setting. Consider the story of Zappos. This startup began with a simple hypothesis. People would be willing to buy shoes online. To put this notion to the test, the entrepreneurs went to shoe retailers and photographed their company's shoes. That they used these images to create a fictitious online shoe store to test if anyone would try to buy their shoes. When consumers tried to buy shoes online, the entrepreneurs realized that their business idea had worked. They didn't have to spend much money to demonstrate that their plan would work, and their concept was validated by real-world clients. Zappos' success prompted Amazon to pay $1.2 billion for the company. Lesson 2. Quit being a caveman. Many entrepreneurs make the mistake of working in isolation for an extended length of time to develop and improve their product. This can be a major issue because, in order to create a viable business strategy, we need to swiftly determine whether the product we're developing is beneficial. Otherwise, we risk wasting time and resources developing a product that no one wants. The quickest and easiest approach to collect real-world input for your project is to construct what is known as an MVP or minimal viable product. This MVP should be simple and contain only what is required to provide users a reasonable expectation of what the whole product will do. A product prototype to gather relevant information and feedback from your customers. Here you may validate two things. First, that your product provides value to your consumers. And second, that the market wants and is prepared to pay for it. Tim Ferriss serves as an excellent example of this. While writing the book, The 4-Hour Workweek, he did two extremely interesting things. One, he solicited comments while he wrote the book. This ensured that what he was writing was truly fascinating and useful to his target audience long before he published the book. Second, he launched Google advertisements to see which title would generate the most clicks on the purchase button. Even though he wasn't selling anything and the buyers weren't paying anything, he determined which title provided him the highest chance of selling the book. The winner, as we now know, was the four-hour work week. Lesson three, use the BML cycle. BML stands for build, measure, and learn. First, you create an MVP, minimum viable product. Then you take the product to market and get user feedback. You take that data and analyze it to see how you can utilize it to better your product and marketing. Then you optimize and improve your product, bringing you back to the start of the cycle. The good news is that you can start making money as soon as you launch your prototype or 
MVP. Think about the iPhone. Almost every year, Apple launches a new version of the iPhone that includes new and better capabilities. As we can see, they are using the BNL cycle. They create and market their product, gather user feedback, learn what they can improve, and then apply it to the next model. The first iPhone was not the best iPhone, yet Apple profited more than $1.2 billion from its sales. Over the years, Apple has made more than $1.6 trillion from iPhone sales alone. The more loops you add to the BML cycle, the more likely you are to create a fantastic product with a more sustainable business plan. Lesson four, don't be a zombie. Entrepreneurs have the mindset that in order to build a great firm, they must persevere through all of the problems and hardships, and that an entrepreneur must have a strong will. Many refer to this as the hustle culture. Although many of these statements are correct, many people can misinterpret this style of thinking in order to dismiss feedback and continue hard selling a product that the market does not desire. To avoid being one of the living dead of mindless zombies selling the wrong goods, we should consider how we may adapt our product to meet what the market wants rather than trying to change the market to fit our needs. You may be passionate about your product, but if the market does not demand it, you will be unable to sell it. At the end of the day, it's about what the market wants, not what the entrepreneur believes they require. Groupon serves as an excellent example of this. Groupon began as an activism platform, but evolved into the daily deals platform we know today due to consumer demand. Lesson five, three growth strategies. As you grow your firm, you should implement these three techniques to increase revenue and expand it. Number one priority, keeping and remarketing existing clients. This is one of the most effective ways to boost income because making money from existing consumers is significantly cheaper than recruiting new clients. So this should be the initial step in increasing your company's revenue. This is accomplished by encouraging users to purchase the product more frequently, providing additional features, or promoting the purchase of new products inside the firm. Turning a one-time transaction into an ongoing relationship can provide the groundwork for a business's continuous revenue stream. Number two, the viral strategy. This is where we ask current customers to manage the company's marketing. This is the stage during which product recognition expands by word of mouth in your target market. Social media is becoming an effective tool for this form of marketing since many individuals enjoy sharing products and services they have purchased with others who may be interested. Creating incentives for your customers to share your goods can encourage this behavior and raise visibility for your company for very little money. Number three, good old sponsored advertising. This is where you design and pay for adverts to attract new customers. There are numerous forms of paid advertising, including billboards, radio, television, print ads, and so on, but the simplest and most effective is internet advertising. We have various advertising venues on the internet, such as Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Google, influencers, and many others that are quite powerful if used correctly. The purpose of paid advertising for a lean startup is not to raise brand awareness, but to sell a product that generates more revenue than the advertising budget. Lesson six, learn your metrics. As your company grows, it is critical to monitor and analyze all of your key guys. You must understand your customer acquisition cost, conversion rate, purchase value, customer lifetime value, as well as user behavior based on age, gender, and customer lifetime. This can provide you with valuable information to help you make informed decisions and have a better grasp of what works and what does not. As we conclude, I'd like to thank you for watching. I hope you found value in this video and learned something new, and I look forward to seeing you in our future videos. I would deeply value it if you could like this video and subscribe to our channel. Your support will help us to create more valuable content and we can work together to secure your financial future. What are the key takeaways from this video that you can share in the comment section?